Hi, this is Steve Kelly. I'm the host of uh, Democratically Speaking. I'm chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and with me today is uh, Jerry Cassidy, who is a, the current um, rep from from the, from Boston, from the Plymouth uh, Ninth District. Mr. Cassidy, how are you today? Good, very good, Steve. Thank you uh, for uh, uh, doing this democratically speaking event. Uh, that's uh, it's an honor to be here. I remember uh, Richard Bath uh, would do this uh, on occasion. Mark Lendy and uh, a bunch of Steve Ford and Ozzy Jordan. They were they were past uh, um, uh, chairman of the Democratic City Committee. So I just want to thank you and all the other. Uh, past presidents for uh, uh, hosting this. Well, I think it's an important part of uh, the Democratic City Committee's job is to focus on getting Democrats elected, and that's where we're at today. Is working on getting you elected, re-elected as a state rep because it's important for us to have, as Democrats, Democratic ele elected officials, and uh, you've got a good background <coughs> as a rep. And uh, what's, the, what, what's really going on on the Hill? Um, right now we're in a, a break right now, but uh, I'm uh, out knocking on doors and the uh, people of the 9th Plymouth District are, uh, actually it's the same, same thing again. The, uh, the, the crime issue is a uh, crime and opioids are one of the bigger issues that uh, are uh, prevalent as far as uh, that goes. Uh, what we've done, I've only been in office for uh, six months but uh, it's been, uh, been a lot of fun and we've done a lot of good things for Brockton uh, with the uh, DA's office moving from uh, downtown to uh, right next to the courthouse, right across from the courthouse. That, the old that, Social Security building there? Yes, yeah, federal building that uh, they're going to create uh, 25 new state police from the Lakeville Middleborough Barracks coming up here and uh, it'll be a uh, great thing for the, uh, for the crime in that general area. When you see 25 new state police vehicles in, in that area. Uh, hopefully crime's going to, uh, you know, go down and uh, uh, knock on wood, uh, things have been pretty good. And uh, also the uh, uh, opioid, that was one of my first uh, votes uh, in the House, and uh, it, was, uh, it was very close to my heart to vote on the opioid uh, vote, and the governor actually fully funded the, uh, uh, that, uh, that bill, and uh, state budget, of course, is uh, just under $40 billion, and uh, we're brought brought back a lot of money uh, back to Brockton for uh, the schools and the uh, senior centers, uh, increased local aid. Uh, um, it's just, just been, been great just for the last uh, six months. You know, last week, I, in the last show I had, it's got Becky running for sheriff uh, as my guest. And one of the issues we talked about is the whole issue on recidivism and what can be done on that. So one of the important parts I see legislation on is working towards... How do you help people to stay out of jail? Um, that uh, I've, I've spoken to uh, the uh, present uh, sheriff uh, McDonald, um, and he's uh, he's assured that uh, a lot of our uh, funding will uh, you know uh, stay in effect. Okay. Now, one of the important what, what's probably the most important legislation you see on the up going on for next year. For the next year, um, uh, right now it's, uh, it seems like it's going to be on the same track, the uh, uh, opioid and uh, eco economic development. That's uh, one of the things that we signed this year was the uh, economic development, which um, I put in the uh, uh, budget, the United Furniture Building. That, uh, that will be uh, redone and more public housing will be, uh, not public housing, more housing will be put in there uh, so people can come in and out of Boston. Uh, living there in that, uh, that, that space, and uh, it'll revitalize downtown Brockton. That's my main, main goal, is to uh, revitalize uh, downtown Brockton. So in, 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 with that comes the whole job training and the whole area on that. You know, one of the big areas I dealt with in my career working for the state was the lack of ESOL programs that are around. Right now you've got about 700 people on a wait list for Brockton. How would we deal with that? On the uh, job uh, job sides, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm fairly friends, uh, uh, working relationships with Chairman Dempsey, and he's assured me that uh, you know, fully funded in uh, um, issues uh, on that that issue. We're uh, uh, working on that this this coming legislature uh, season. Mm -hmm. So one of your big areas, as you said, was to bring down the uh, district attorney's office to keep it downtown. 
And also, you support legislation to protect firefighters. And uh, what, what's that all about? Uh, the firefighters, they're, they're, they're one of the, uh, the uh, wonderful uh, people in here in the city and the state. Um, and they, uh, they go into burning buildings, uh, um, you know, when people are running out. They're, uh, they're wonderful. And we're, we've uh, funded uh, an awful lot of programs that will uh, keep them safe in uh, uh, their, their fire trucks and uh, uh, all kinds of equipment to uh, make sure that uh, nobody, uh, um, nobody has a uh, casualty. But it's also, how do they stay safe afterwards? You know, it's like a lot of occupational hazards go into, right. Right. you know, being a firefighter. Look at 9-11 and all the uh, firefighters that came down with diseases after the fact. Right, right. But uh, that, that's what we're trying to do is, you know, a state delegation between uh, Rep. Uh, Dubois and Rep. Uh, Cronin and uh, Senator Brady. We're uh, working as a team to uh, make sure our local uh, firefighters are uh, kept safe and uh, uh, there's, there's nobody better than uh, the, the firefighters. Exactly. So one of the pieces that you know, I see important is the whole issue of privatization going on in the MBTA and other issues. How do you stand on that? Uh, being a Democrat, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, trying to uh, break the unions are not, uh, not what uh, I'm about, and I don't think uh, uh, people uh, being a Democrat, that's, that's what uh, uh, they're about. Um, you know, the governor pretty much uh, would like to privatize uh, the MBTA, and uh, I don't, uh, as long as I'm there, I don't uh, see that, uh, that happening. Now, it's one of those issues that's dear to my heart, being a state worker for 40 years, you know, keeping the Pacheco bill going and uh, protecting people's jobs. You know, anytime you have a private entity trying to make profit on the backs of people, um, right. We have to stand up for the working right. people. As Democrats, that's one of the primary things we need to do. My whole thing is, you know, working on getting economic development going. And that's one of the critical pieces. The uh, economic development, uh, it, it's a funny thing. The last day of the session was July 31st. <clears throat> and there was, uh, the governor wanted six, uh, six big bills. One was the energy bill and the other was the uh, ride for hire um, 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 what was the other one? Uh, yeah, uh, mo uh, municipal modernization. And uh, the economic package was in there too. And it was within like an hour. Um, there were four of them were not even done yet. So it's like, oh, this isn't going to happen. So uh, Jay Ash, who's the uh, Housing and Economic Development uh, Secretary, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. Um, he and I have been friends for 30, close to 30 years. Um, he got, he got that done, the economic package, that, that it's going to actually really revitalize downtown Brockton. Uh, I think it was like $2.4 uh, billion out of that uh, came into that uh, package. And uh, like I said, the United Furniture Building, that'll be one. Um, not in that package, but the uh, uh, unemployment office. They were threatening to move uh, you know, over to Mansfield. And we as a delegation in... Uh, uh, stood up and said, uh, no, that's not happening. And uh, in turn, they're staying downtown where they're going to put another $1.2 million into the building that's staying down here. And 65 new employees Good. are going to be coming down downtown. And um, just, just like that movie, it's not going to be a Detroit movie. No, that's the whole part of it. Is how do we make the, you know, the job training? You see, the whole emphasis has got to be on filling the skills gap. You know, this, there's jobs that are out there, and a lot of times people aren't trained for them. So how do we work on that? Part of that would be Massasoit's Health Building. Right. In, the, uh, in that package, there's a job skills uh, training. Uh, they increased it, uh, I think it was like $4 million, and Brockton's going to get uh, $400,000, I believe it is, for job, uh, job training. Uh, that'll go with the uh, uh, Brockton High School. Um, and uh, that's what we need to do is have the job skills. So uh, we can have all the housing uh, we want in the area, but we need to have job skills with the Allied Health Center. Uh, I know I spoke to the uh, uh, president, uh, President Charlie Waller of Massasoit, and uh, we're still looking at the Allied Health Center moving on campus over there. I would prefer to have it downtown Brockton, uh, where you know the late Senator Tom Kennedy wanted to uh, uh, have a college collaborative down there. 
in turn, we wanted to have the Allied Health Center downtown Brockton. It just makes a little more sense where there's an awful lot of people uh, actually going downtown. Uh, and uh, I'd, I'd prefer to have it downtown Brockton as opposed to over uh, Massasoit, but I mean, if, if we can get something like that, uh, that would be great. Because I think that's where the jobs are. The jobs are going to be in the healthcare f field. You know, right. there's a lot of folks like myself aging up, and we got to keep the, where you know look where the jobs are. And I think the number one employers in Brockton are the whole health field. Right. And collaborating in that area and recognizing that strength is really a direction we need to go on. Yeah, there was a, there was a study done this past uh, summer by uh, MIT and uh, Harvard students and uh, the uh, Downtown Business uh, Association, they uh, provided funding for that, and, and that was the number one thing, was the job skills in the health field. And uh, uh, Steve, I've known you for close to 30 years, and I don't think you're getting up there that, that you know, get, getting up there in age. Hey, I retired after working for the state <laughs> for 40 years, so I think it's uh, self-evident, Yeah, you know. And, you know, what's really important, I think, for people to recognize is that Having reps like uh, Representative Cassidy up on the hill and having Tom Kennedy up there before and uh, Mike Brady and Claire Cronin and Michelle Dubois, the unity that's in that de delegation is really what we want to keep going. Right, and that's, that's what uh, happens with some other uh, uh, cities and towns. You know, they have infighting amongst their uh, reps and it doesn't uh, bode well with the uh, leadership. Um, and uh, it, it, it's always good to have a... Uh, nice calming uh, relationship with all of us and we work very well with the mayor and uh, you know it, it, it things things are moving along and uh, I can just feel the energy um, coming back down you know in the general area we were at the Stacy Adams building uh, a short time ago and that uh, building was uh, vacant and now they have an artist lofts in there and there's uh, it was a wonderful event there's so oh, close to 200 uh, uh, rental units in there and uh, they're doing a good job, and I'm working with the uh, Stacey Adams uh, owners to uh, have uh, uh, Stacey Adams Shoes mm -hmm. come back and try to do some type of uh, event here. Mm -hmm. So one of the other issues, what, what other issues do you think are important for the voters to know about you? Uh, just uh, to know about me, I've been a lifelong Brocktonian, uh, 30, uh, uh, you know, a third generation Brocktonian. I worked with uh, Senator Tom Kennedy, who passed away. Uh, last year. Um, Tom was a wonderful man and even now when I go up to, up to the State House uh, work and they always, everybody mentions, uh, you know, what, a, what an icon he was and uh, we're looking to do a few special things for uh, 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 Tom Kennedy around Brown Brockner. In fact, they uh, just to plug the Brockner Hospital, they're having a, uh, an event for him over Raynham uh, Dog Track for uh, advocacy uh, uh, program that they have over there where where uh, people can't uh, afford getting trips to the hospital, so this fund uh, helps them either pay for some medicine here or there, uh, medical equipment. Uh, so that's October 7th over at Raynham Dog Track. Good. Good. Uh, it's a wonderful event and uh, for uh, just a wonderful man. Yeah, Tom was one of those people that I had the pleasure of uh, working in every one of his campaigns. Met you for the first time on one of those. Right. You know, he did a lot for Brockton. Uh, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. One of the first times I, I was a worker down in Brockton, and I get a call from Tom. <laughs> he did a lot of constituent services. Right. So I had this client that wanted to go to a uh, for-profit educational program that was untried. Would have cost. She wanted it to be a paralegal. So but what we worked on is trying to discourage people. So I denied her daycare. Next thing I know, Tom's calling me up on the phone saying, why are you doing it? Explain to him what was going on. Right. He said, keep up the good work. Yep. You know? yep. That's but that was the kind of constituent services that I'm sure you're getting involved yeah, in. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm striving to do. And, you know, in fact, I helped a gentleman out the other day. He had an issue with the uh, Department of Revenue, and uh, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, sometimes you need a little push with uh, government. You need just uh, somebody to advocate for you know, the citizens, and I, I learned that over the 30 years with, uh, with uh, Senator Tom Kennedy, and he always had the policy to make sure it's an open-door policy. Wherever he went, uh, as far as offices, uh, we always had the door open, and people, uh, people would come in and uh, say, oh, that's very nice, and, you know, I, 
I, I portray the same same attributes. Now I know that a few times I was up at the state house. Tom always had the open door, and I was always able to stop in and visit and say hello. Right, and the, uh, the he was a lifelong uh, Democrat. And uh, uh, years ago, we had the uh, um, uh, enrollment in the Democratic City Committee. It was uh, probably around 200, maybe 250 people. And right now, I think that's what we need to get back to is. Uh, Bringing back the uh, fact that uh, if we stick together, being Democrats, uh, we need to enroll uh, more people out there to uh, join the Democratic City Committee, and uh, that bodes well throughout the whole state. That's one of the issues that uh, I'm going to be working on with as a new chair is uh, putting together, getting people involved in politics because it's really important to have people involved in the ground up if we're going to elect Hillary Clinton as our next president. We need to keep a strong Democratic Party at all levels. That's true. It, it, it's it's it, like I was saying, it bodes well throughout the whole state, saying that uh, you know they have a full slate of uh, uh, candidates on uh, uh, the the city committee, and you know that's that's when you get a little more power with the uh, the state committee. They'll uh, they'll uh, stand up and take notice when you have a full slate of, uh, of uh, participants. So our next meeting is going to be October 20th over at the uh, Firefighters Hall, 630. If Democrats are interested, come join us. You know, one of the big things about being on the city committee is the ability of residents to meet and to interact with the legislators. One of the primary theses we're going to have for each meeting is having uh, our legislators there so that we're able to identify issues that are important and work towards getting the legislation acted on. And not only that, with our, with our uh, state delegation, we have uh, working relationships with other chairmen throughout the, uh, the uh, uh, building. And uh, we could bring them down here and, you know, uh, introduce them to the citizens of Brockton and right. keep an update on, uh, you know, like uh, Chairman Tom Golden from uh, Lowell. Uh, he's, he's the chairman of the Energy Committee. And I think that would be a very good, good. Uh, thing that we could do. Good. In that aspect. Because I think it's keeping people informed about legislation that is out there, that is important for the citizens of Brockton to know about. And that's one of the vehicles this show becomes, is informing people about democratic issues, such as the environment, such as education. Uh, one of the big stances we took on the committee is we came out against um, the, the uh, no on question two. You know, the, having more charter schools in this area would hurt us. When you look at the, the question number two, there's four questions, as we know. Uh, question number two is really going to have a big, uh, uh, imp, uh, big problem with uh, the city of Brockton. We have to vote, make sure we vote no on two. Uh, and when you look at the other side, the, the yes people, uh, the Waltons who own uh, Walmart, they just donated $4 million to the yes uh, question. So we know big business wants uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, charter schools. Uh, and it, it's only going to take money away from uh, the, the school city of uh, Brockton. Uh, so I, it, it's just uh, going to be a big uh, deterrent that uh, you know, we, we have to make sure that everybody gets out and votes no one too. That's the whole issue is people got to get out and vote because that's where we need to go is you know, it, it, people, when we have like what, a 30%, less than 15% turnout for the primary? Oh, it was less than that, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And here we are going on, you know, into a presidential election. People got to get out there and prepare to vote. So, um, in any case, what else do you think we want to talk about? How about the debate last night? What did you think about that? Oh, the that? debate. that uh, it, it was a very interesting, and uh, we were watching it, and he really doesn't seem, uh, the, Donald Trump doesn't seem very uh, diplomatic, you know, if he's, he's going to go throughout the whole world, uh, China, or, you know, Russia, or Germany, whatever. Uh, it just seems like he's not as diplomatic as uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, I thought she did a great job as far as um, uh, being that, that type of person. I think the other issue is he doesn't seem presidential. You know, it's his, his answer to everything is, I have property there. Now, you may have property, but if you really look at the business, his business model, right. it's not friendly to the working people. 
when you get the, the, the former presidents all voting for Hillary Clinton, that uh, just speaks volumes on that issue. No, and especially when they're Republican presidents. Right. right. You know, the uh, issue that I think is really important too is working on. Uh, okay, you got charter schools going. It's it's basically getting people out to vote. Is I think the number one issue that the Democratic Party's got to be involved in. You know, speaking of getting people up out to vote. Um, there are opportunities out there now for people to work on the Hillary Clinton campaign. There will be uh, carpools going up to New Hampshire from Brockton. We're working out the details. You can make phone calls now from home uh, by going to hillaryclinton.com slash calls. And you can make calls from the comfort of your own home to all over the United States to get people to vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, we'll be adding more on our Facebook page for Brockton Dems at Facebook. Uh, but in any case, you know, knowing you for all the years and having you as my city councilor, you know, you've got a lot of background as the city councilor and they're working up at the state house. You know a lot about what's going on in the city. Right. It, it, it's uh, um, thank you, thank you, Steve, for that. And uh, I just want to, you know, once again thank uh, Mark Lindy and Steve Ford and Ozzie Jordan, being past presidents. They've uh, they did a uh, great job as uh, uh, chairmen of the uh, uh, city committee. And I want to thank you for your group for uh, uh, helping us uh, revitalize the uh, Brockton Democratic City Committee. I know it's not easy, but uh, it was a very good turnout at the uh, Red Sullivan's uh, breakfast. Um, a couple weeks ago, and that uh, uh, Mr. Democrat, or Red Sullivan, as we know, he was uh, he was a strong advocate for uh, uh, the Democratic uh, City Committee. My yes, Red was a real, real men. Yeah, you know, I wish in a way that I could talk with him more because he would be a mentor on how we can move this thing forward and getting people involved in their own politics. You know, getting in people involved, I think, is the primary right. job I've got is to get people involved to get out to vote. And, and, and the city councilors and the state reps and senators, uh, we're all on board with that, uh, um, that uh, issue and uh, we just need to make sure that uh, we all stick together and uh, you know, make Brockton a better city, which, uh, which uh, I believe I can, as I'm, as I'm going around knocking on doors and I can just feel the energy coming back, uh, back to Brockton. And, and, uh, um, I don't think uh, you, when uh, somebody says make America great again, I think America is great. I agree with that entirely. It, now, your district is one, you're one of the few reps from Brockton that has all Brockton, only Brockton. Yes, my, my district goes up from uh, Oak Street up by uh, Hilliard's uh, Candy up around that area. And it goes uh, south all the way down Main Street, uh, Brockton to West Bridgewater Line. And it goes over to the uh, um, East Junior High and uh, over towards like the Kennedy School. And uh, it's a very diverse uh, community. Um, you know, a lot of great uh, people that uh, have, uh, went to the Lebanese Festival this weekend. And, you know, people said, I voted for you this last time and I'll you know, vote for you next time. It's uh, just uh, very, very nice to see that uh, so many great, great people in Brockton. And, you know, I picked up a couple of cases that I'm working on. Uh, for some of these people with uh, uh, schools, uh, colleges, that uh, uh, I'm working on, hopefully we can uh, get there, go, get those results. And it comes back to constituent service, as as we know. Uh, anytime somebody calls you, you have to call right back. Uh, maybe not right away. I, I can't get get to them right away. But uh, you know, I do have a wonderful aide, uh, Bridget Pluff. Mm -hmm. She's uh, she's working in the office and she's doing a uh, yeoman's work. Um, you know, just just like uh, Senator Tom Kennedy had a great staff, I, I, I have a very good staff too. One of the big issues that I saw in, in government service was uh, we would raise taxes. And Massachusetts started using this pay for success, you know, in a number of realms. And I think using it for prevention of, op you know, for the, for the recovery of opiate addicts would really be... Uh, an important way to go. Right, right. And, you know, it, it, the, the, the funding mechanism is uh, um, working uh, uh, down here at the Champion Charter School. That, uh, 
um, you know, the mayor's doing, the uh, mayor was on the uh, governor's task force for that. And uh, I can see him doing a, a very good job in that, those issues with the opioid uh, issue uh, that uh, we're fully funded on the house, house side. And uh, uh, it's just amazing how both, both sides came together just for this one issue. That's, it's not a Democrat or Republican issue. This, this one issue of the opioid affects every, every family. And, and so going across the whole United States correct. as being one of those issues that um, affects every, uh, more families across the, you know, across the country, across all economic lines, all racial lines, and how we keep people off of it. I, I spoke to uh, Senator Warren a few weeks ago, and she was, uh, that's one of their main uh, um, goals when uh, uh, Hillary becomes president is to uh, combat that. There, there's going to be a uh, uh, person that, that'll uh, uh, make sure that uh, the, the states uh, get uh, the fully funded uh, federal dollars that we need to uh, uh, take care of these issues. And uh, on another point locally, the Brewster Ambulance, they, uh, they do a wonderful job by uh, transporting some of these people to hospitals that they uh, um, you know, they don't have um, you know, a lot of money, so they, uh, they try to help these people to go to the Champion Charter, and then, then they uh, bring them to the hospital from there. Mm -hmm. By the Champion Charter, you're talking about the whole program of, instead of going to, you know, where someone I'm turns... I'm sorry, the stay, stay away to recovery. That, right, that's stairway the, to yeah, recovery. Yeah, yeah. The Champion Charter School, right, I think, right. was a yeah, that different... Was, uh, the Champion and the Stairway to Recovery. <sighs> Right, so that's that. that that's in one of those programs that I think, right. you know, the uh, because I think that's funded primarily by grants and other issues. Right, and a way of funding that directly is that you know that um, the whole pay for success bonds. Right, as a way because you know exactly how much money you're going to save if you don't put someone in jail. You know how much money you're going to save uh, if you keep someone from. Uh, going into long-term addiction. Right. So you can use that funds on the savings to pay for your program. And we could do that too with the next, next year's uh, the state budget. The, uh, the state budget was $38.9 billion uh, with uh, $177 million for uh, um, uh, supplemental. And I think next year, I think we'll, we're, we're going to take a big look at, uh, at that. And uh, this past year, we didn't raise any taxes, which was... Uh, uh, nice, but we still want to, you know, bring funding back to Brockton so we can help, you know, with the uh, the, the Brockton school system. The the, the uh, representative uh, Cronin and I worked very hard on the transportation bill with the uh, public schools. Um, you know, we get uh, some money put in the budget for that, so it wasn't as bad as a uh, blow the Brockton public schools uh, received. So that was a one point two million million that we. Do you see any nine C cuts coming this year? Yes. Yeah, I, I, there's there's hundreds of uh, nine C cuts coming coming down, but uh, hopefully some of them won't won't uh, affect you know the Brockton delegation, Brockton City. Well, it looks like we're at the end of our time, and it's always been a pleasure to know you and to have you as a friend and uh, to have you as my guest today. Is there any final thing you want to say? Just just keep this going, Steve. You're you're doing a great job, and uh, I think we need to get all the Democrats. Uh, um, you know, signed up for the Democratic City Committee so we can have one voice. And uh, I've been a member for uh, 30, 30 years on the Democratic City Committee. And uh, it's just, uh, just an honor and privilege to be a Democrat. And uh, thank you. Thank you, sir.